So I took the door back off um, and I'm stripping this ugly black paint. Here's some close-ups, the kind of condition it's in. That's probably some rust I'll have to repair. If you look up here, it's on thick, it's on poorly. But that's going to be good for me because I was watching uh, Marcy Junebug, and some of you probably already watch her. If you don't, go find her. She works on, uh, she's got uh, a split window double cab. She's got a 58 split window bus that she's bringing back called Pickle. Uh, she's got a, a bug that's slammed. Great stuff. Anyway, she used this, from what I understand, Goof Off Graffiti Remover. And I've already done a test of this stuff. Spray it on and it will start to eat the paint, but it's only eating this top layer. Kind of like trying to get graffiti off of a painted cinder block wall. It's going to get the thin stuff off, but it's not so aggressive that it will take the stuff underneath. So, for example, this bumper, you can check it out. It's in my custom bumper holder also known as my Jeep. The inside of it, see this brown paint? This is what was covering the outside. I have not painted it. There's still a little bit left on here, you see, but it basically left the white paint and the brown came off. Just using this goof off and then you scrub it and then to neutralize it, you come back and scrub it again with a lot of water. It uh, rinses it off. So. That is the plan here. I am confident that I will be able to get it off without having to do too much damage. Where it might be worn through, this is gonna get painted orange. Anyway, by the way, you can see right here, here, the runs are terrible. A whole bunch right up in there. But it's white underneath. So if I can get through the black, preserve the white, give it a little bit of polish, paint this section orange, it's going to have the same faded look as the bus itself. So let's get to it. So far, not horrible. We'll likely need some touch up, but it is starting to come off. All right, I'll bring you guys back later. Okay, making some progress. Overall, pretty happy. Uh, clearly was a two-tone white and creamy yellow. Um, there's a good chance I'll have to do some white touch up but it'll still be easier to get this to a nice surface and put a little bit of gray primer down and then put the orange over the top and then paint some white on white, thin coat, just to even it out. There's like a big chip here. There's a, a hard lip right there. You can hear it. Um, so, not a problem. Bondo here. So I'm working through that, trying to see how much rust damage some pretty significant pits there uh and there's also some as i mentioned earlier by the uh where the turn signal bulb is so i will have to be doing more sanding than just scrubbing right now i'm just on paint removal but i will have to do some sanding i'm going to look on the inside here uh, later when i flip the bus over uh, bus door over to see if that is uh, bondo coming through if there's a dent if there's bad rust but I'll sand that down. Hopefully won't have too much of a, an issue. If it's a dent, I'm getting rid of the Bondo and I'll let the dent be visible. That's fine by me. Um, just working through. It's got a lot of surface rust on some of the top edge here. Okay. A little bit along there. Quite a bit down here. It's just ugly. It's not rotted through. It's very solid. It's just been chipped up and... Let me see. 
down in there. Yeah, so you see down in here, you know, again, it's solid, but it's got a lot of surface rust. So I'll probably end up sanding this down to closer to bare metal than I had planned. Um, I'm hoping to keep as much of the yellow on there as possible, but some spots I will have to sand down additional. Boy, hard work. Definitely rust here. I'm hoping when I grind in that I've got enough decent metal that I don't have to cut it out and weld in a patch. But if I do, it will be behind the side marker light. So you can see the discoloration. So if I can cut within that and replace it, that'll be an easy fix. Uh, you can see there are times in my aggressiveness to get to or through some of this, like this black, some of these things are still proud. I can feel that one. So I will have to go over this thing with some sandpaper. But what I was trying to do, and I'm pretty happy with the final results, it's not final, but overall results, is the vast majority of that black trash is gone. There are lots of chips in the paint that will need to be uh, sanded smooth. Probably a little bit of a skim coat. Again, I'm getting rid of that Bondo. The change in color there. So sand these parts down. Went down to the bare metal in some spots here, around there, but just had to get rid of that black stuff. And I wanted to do it in the least abrasive ways as I could. Um, you'll see what I went through here. Quite a few of the Scotch-Brite. I ended up buying this, a box of it. Definitely the cheapest, 30 pieces. I think it was like 15 bucks, 20 bucks. The goof off for the most part did a good job, but I would rather have it be slightly less corrosive than slightly too much. And what I'm left with is a pretty strong coat of original paint that's adhering to the sheet metal. And that is going to save me so that the orange coat is entirely about color and not sealant for the vast majority of it. Obviously, there are going to be some spots. Okay. So uh, next step is going to be sanding, addressing any metal uh, weaknesses, and then give it a coat of white paint and orange for the two-tone look and uh, we'll see how it came out or comes out I i'm not uh i'm not going to be worried too much if it matches perfectly uh there are ways to weather that i'm going to be able to explore um but anyway progress the only problem is this was a pain in the butt and i still have the entire sliding door to do which is obviously more that'll be in another video though this is all about getting this door buttoned up all right, it's the next day, and uh, this thing's had some time to sort of dry and sit. And I'm going to be using this on that. I haven't decided yet how aggressive I want to be at attacking that Bondo over there, but we'll see. So, that little hole there is where the uh, screw goes through to attach it. And that one, obviously, there's a lot of pretty good metal there, but uh, let me go get a hammer so we can really find it. Definitely a problem there, definitely a problem there. So I've got a couple ideas. Um, I have hole saws and I think I could put the bit right down in that cut a circle, put a bit right down in that hole, cut a circle out, do the same thing on a piece of uh, sheet metal, and I have a perfect patch. So let's give that a try. Hole saw. I think that's a uh, 18 gauge. Might be a little thicker than the door, but it's all I have. And uh, should work. So put that in there. Cut a hole out, you see it basically takes care of that rut. Put it in there. Same thing, takes care of that rut. 
cut a sample, cut a template. Already has a pilot hole there for where it needs one in the middle. And I will have a good template that will fit. And then I can weld it in. I've already verified, nothing on the other side of this. So I'm not taking out any strut braces or anything like that. It's just a straight up piece of sheet metal there. So uh, let's give it a shot. Worst case scenario, I cut out around those holes, take a rectangular piece and splice it in and then refine or remap uh, where the holes go and all that stuff. I'll measure how far up and in each one is. So I have that for my records anyway. It is, first hole is four and a quarter inches over and five and three quarter inches up. Second one is, same, five and three quarters, maybe. Yeah, five and three quarters and seven and about three sixteenths. What I'll do is when I get the side marker light, I'll get that one right and then we'll get on that one. And if it's off by an eighth of an inch here or there, whatevs. Okay. Uh, also, I know that they're, these are not exactly precision instruments of metal fabrication. That's actually in my favor. This thing is going to make the hole here slightly bigger than the hole saw, just because there's a little bit of movement. And the inside one will be slightly smaller. That will leave me somewhere around a sixteenth of an inch or so gap which I then fill in with the weld. Here's hoping this works. Not terrible. You can have to see that's where all that real punky metal was. Second one should be a little easier. You can never have too many hole saws, so. All right. Two holes. This is what the hole saw produced, and this is how big it actually needs to be. So this ended up being as a product of the hole saw, about an eighth of an inch inside all the way around. So a quarter of an inch smaller in diameter, just not gonna fit. So I used the shears and uh, made one that will. So you see there, but there are worse things. I'm gonna mark the hole for the center though, and then uh, put it in. That feels pretty good. Given where it is, if there's a slight imperfection, again, I'm getting this thing back on the road, not uh, to Barrett Jackson's, and it's gonna be covered by the side marker light. So, gonna get the welder, try to pop this thing in real quick. And before anybody gives me crap about it, that gas tank is empty, and it hasn't had gas in it in years. I'm not launching sparks from this towards something that's gonna blow up. Taking a moment to pause here. Um, I have very little experience welding sheet metal. It has just always been something I do poorly. Uh, this is a good opportunity to practice before I do something like the nose, uh, because again, it's gonna be covered up. But it, you, you gotta go easy on it. I'm making sure that I give it plenty of rest. I'm moving around. I'm probably gonna put a couple more in and let it cool off for a little while, and then come back and do a little bit more.
Well, I can say with confidence that I stink at welding sheet metal. It's solid. I am much better at structural. Doing the narrow beam that I did for my bug, much easier. It's going into, you know, eighth inch plus thick steel tubing. Uh, you can give it the spurs and everything's fine. This stuff, I got some warpage here. There's a bit of a dip that I do not like. I'm going to try to pound it out from the back. Um, this side's a little better. I, I, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not welding anymore. There might be some pinholes. Um, I, it's just, it is what it is. A little bit so, of Bondo. Had to put it a bit thicker there. It's probably close to, I don't know, at its deepest, it might be, I don't know, eighth of an inch, uh, 330 seconds. Pretty thin here, just filling in a bit of the ridges uh, between the welds. It'll be good enough. Um, also drilled a hole there and a hole there, made them a little small so that if I need to fudge them to get perfect, but I didn't want to lose track of where they went. Uh, next step, let this dry overnight, sand it, and then I'm going to sand this whole thing with a DA sander lightly um work out these chips among other things and uh put on some primer and then some white and orange and use this as a test bed to see how good of a color match i can get to again that orange not that orange You get the idea, I'll bring you back later. Went across the whole thing and uh, with uh, 120, smoothed out quite a bit. Uh, most of this stuff is looking pretty good. Not surprising, this is a bit buckled. So I'm going to have to add a little bit more Bondo. There's some pits in some spots uh, along here. This is not all the way through, so a teeny bit of Bondo and that'll be fine. Uh, same here use some rust converter here we do have a little bit of blow through you see that hole there uh, so I'll weld that real quick um, all along the bottom edge and elsewhere a lot of surface rust but nothing causing it any issue so some of the rust oleum rust converter not pour 15 but basically the same thing it's like milk of magnesia or whatever and then you put it on it turns black in the presence of rust i'll do that and then send that back and then primer so today rust converter well that hole a little bit more bondo there and somewhere in that area and we should be good so i started uh trying to weld and it just was burning straight through so a little bit thinner than i thought you see there not so good so um, I am going to sand this back, weld it up, and then, um, then from the inside, I'm going to flood it with rust, uh, preventative from, uh, the rust oleum stuff that I got. I had to do the exact same thing on my bug door and it worked out just fine. Made my little patch. Now I'm going to weld it in. I'll save you the fleshy fleshy. Rust treatment, doing its thing, turning lots of stuff black. There's the welded in patch. Um, it's solid. It's, uh, there's, this is a little bit low, so a little bit of skim filler should be fine. There again, you can see, here's what it looks like when it starts to convert. So that'll just sand off, but it's really a nice thick hard coat. Put a whole bunch down underneath here, all along on the inside. Again, what we're looking for is solid and functional. Uh, the outside is not supposed to be custom restoration. I mean, that thing there was really just about getting it on the road and getting it looking like I wanted. So, bus falls into the same category. So now I'm gonna do filler for that and over there and uh, let it harden up. So that section is as repaired as it's gonna get. I have sanded it down with a sanding block. 
and this is 220 but i started with 150 and i went across the uh, entire thing you can see where i've tried to sand it smooth the rust treatment has been taken care of so everything so far is pretty good then i have this as a tack cloth to wipe off any of the yellow dust i am now going to hit it with primer professional grade uh whatever that means priming the whole thing uh the inside has not been cleaned or taken care of but i'm going to primer the outside because i got exposed metal and i just want to see where i'm at it's going to let me know if there are any major issues then i'm going to go over the whole thing in the white that i think should match the top section of the existing bus and then i have an orange for this bottom section that will be the third and final layer uh, the inside will get painted cream white entirely and uh, it just needs a good clean and I did find one rust spot but I can take care of that after the primer before color coats so see how it goes couple coats in looking pretty good not perfect but neither is the rest of the bus so it's going to be all right uh, that hole is actually I left it there on purpose believe it or not because that is where one of the two mounting holes for the side marker light goes. Um, you can see here a few little dents. I'm not getting in there to pound it out because it's really hard to access it from the backside. Um, but overall, pretty clean and smooth. That came out nice. So I'm going to leave it primered and then I'm going to flip it over and clean the backside. And there is some rust right down in here. So this is sort of by the uh, side vent. So just a strip right here, about four inches long, maybe a quarter of an inch, cut it out, put a piece in, weld it up when it's on the flip side, and then uh, clean the whole other side and primer it. So it should work out just fine. Once I'm done with all of the primer and rust repair, I can then go to the white and uh, have at it.